In this video I show you how to get the Cursed Nourishing Abyssal Blood Gems. These are the best blood gems for weapons that do split damage. So this would include like Boom Hammer, Tenitris, uh, Burial Blade even. So there are three different gems that you want to pick up. You want to pick up the Radial, Triangle, and Waning types. So in this video we have three different dungeons where you can pick up uh, those three different gems. So the radial version, the Cursed Nourishing Abyssal uh, Blood Gem radial shape comes from the Depth 5 Thurmru Ithel Chalice, I think is what it's called, which is the one you're seeing right now. So you can just use this, uh, you know, just watch where my character is going and just follow the path. Uh, check the description for for the glyphs of how to figure this out. This is uh, these are FRC Death Five chalices. So these are the deepest chalices you can go. So once you pull this lever after following the path, I usually just use a uh, I want to say homeward bone, but I know that's Dark Souls. You just bone back to the bonfire. Cuts down on uh, walking time. So this first boss that comes up here, this is the Watchdog of the Old Lords, which is one of the more challenging bosses, especially in a cursed dungeon. Uh, Whirly Gig Saw works very, very well against this boss. I highly recommend using this weapon. You can see the strategy that I have here. I buff up, get some bolt paper, beast blood pellet. And I just pretty much charge straight in, do a running, running attack against his leg, staggers him, and then you just work from foot to foot. So you can see here that he got staggered, move to the next foot, hit it three times, he staggers again. And I wasn't able to... No, actually I was, actually, sorry. And then once you have him staggered for all four legs, get in some extra damage there and just start R1 spamming. He's going to do a dart here and then he'll, he'll want to explode. And then after he explodes, he'll puke lava. Usually does this consistently, so you can see he's puking lava. Just weed whack him. The fight will be over in less than a minute. That is, of course, with really good gems. I got, I think, the best uh, tempering gems on my worldly gig saw. Player two is still pretty straightforward. believe you want to go up an elevator okay yeah you do okay so in this room you go up an elevator and then you go into a room with those uh, mad things that spawn from the witch like in the boss uh, witch of Hemwick it's pretty annoying so I usually found an elixir here to be invisible so they don't catch me as well they can still catch you if you're invisible not with it there but then you got these spiders in this next room. And sometimes they can block you in that doorway and then you're just sandwiched and you just die, unfortunately. Kill this thing, the bell, bell woman. For some reason, this guy followed me down here. Usually that doesn't happen, but some, this time it did. Kill the fat guy if you want. It's kind of, you can just run around him. I don't know why I'm messing with him here. And then obviously you can homework on out here. I choose to do that because I don't really want to run through that room again. And then the next boss is the, uh, the three watchers, the merciless watchers. Uh, these bosses, or this boss, I guess it's the one boss battle, will give you the best gems of every type but they usually drop the tempering gems, which are the 27.2s, which are the most useful. And they can give you those, but that doesn't mean they necessarily will give you those, and more often than not, they won't. But they also give a variety of other gems, like the Adept gems, um, Fire gems, the Elemental types, and then very rarely the Nourishing ones, which, you know, you can farm for them, but it's, it's going to be a long, long time try and get those gems. So for this video we just focus on the abyssals which you can get in the third third depth here. I mean third layer. 
best strategy for the watchers you want to kind of use the pillars for cover go for viscerals they're going to be your best bet here they tend to be very weak against arcane damage so if you have any uh, weapons that do heavy arcane damage like the holy moonlight sword there you can see that one I believe it's the L2 it did like 1700 damage or something it's kind of insane there you can see it gave me the tempering gem not sure what it may have, I don't think it was a 27.2 but I don't really need any at this point so in the third layer uh, you'll have the, the I don't know what they call it, but they shoot fireballs and they can one-shot you and they're just out this corner. I usually just run into them. But beware there's spiders at the other end. If you just want to run around the elevator, be mindful of the spiders. Kill the bell ringing woman. Because those spiders are super aggressive. I don't know why Frenzel did that made these spiders because they will as long as you're on this layer they will follow you everywhere you definitely want to kill the bell ringing woman and you gotta snatch her up here whatever they're called I don't really know the names of any of the enemies in the game besides bosses I don't really know how people know I guess it's strategy guides go through this little window there'll be a guy on the other side Kill him, or not. Then you got these guys, they can definitely one-shot you. Now I bone out here, but in the room that I just went through with the bell ringing woman, there's some heals in there if you want to pick those up, because I got 12 heals here, but if I had less I probably would have went pick them up. And so for the final boss on uh, layer 3 is Rom the Vacuous Spider. Rom is one of the toughest bosses in the game in my opinion, but if you have the great strategy for it, uh, then Rom can be can be killed in a minute, and usually with no damage. So you can see here I switch to the Tenitris in one hand and the Ligarius Wheel in the other. Now the Tenitris is going to be my main weapon here, and I'm going to use the wheel for a very specific thing. But the Tenitris, as far as I can tell, is the best weapon for dealing with these spiders, because that bolt buff does a good, does really good damage against the little spiders, and what you want to do is you want to kill every single spider and just ignore Rom. Rom won't attack you. you. Just kill every last spider, because you don't want any more when there's, you know, for the next step how to kill Rom, you do not want any more spiders. And you see here, this Tenitris is really, I mean, I don't have, like, uh, what are they called, Fool's Gems, attack up to full HP. I don't have those. These are just your standard uh, Nourishing Gems, which, is, which are the ones I'm going to be getting when I kill Rom here. So these Nourishing Gems are really freaking good. Okay, so when all the spiders are dead, I get out the wheel, I get a Blood Pellet, and then I do these uh, spinning R2s on Rom's head, which Rom has very high uh, damage resistance on her head. So you can build up beast meter really high, and then you just start wailing on her with the Tenitris. So you just keep spamming, get as much health as you can. You're probably not going to kill Rom, but sometimes you do. And then when Rom is this low, she'll spawn in this exact location. So you want to run back here and then kill her in one or two hits, which I do here. So this is a very clean ROM. And then we get a Cursed Nourishing Abyssal Blood Gem. Radial type. Now, the radial types that you get from ROM are not as good as the Triangle and Waning types. I don't know why, they're just, they're just not. So you can see here's a couple of Abyssal Gems, Attack Up 19 and a half, some secondary stat, and then a Curse. So the best the best uh, curse is the, well it depends on what you want to use the weapon for, but the stamina down is the best curse for PvE. And then the second stat, you know, the best one in my opinion is the plus 15 physical damage. 
All right, so now we've already started the next dungeon. So this is the Is Dungeon. Uh, you get the best triangle gems from the Is Dungeon. So in this, so in this particular chalice, again, check the uh, video description for the glyph because I believe this is a closed glyph here. You have to actually know the glyph in order to access this dungeon. The nourishing triangle that you get here comes from the Amygdala boss. I've killed Amygdala so many times, it's, it's, it's pretty much a cakewalk at this point. So you can see here, instead of boning back to the bonfire, or the lamp, I should say, I just run to the, run to the gate. I guess I just didn't feel like sitting through a load screen. The first boss in uh, this layer, this dungeon, is the man-eater boar, the giant pig. And you can see here, uh, the best strategy I find is get out a pungent blood cocktail, throw it into a corner, and then just chain backstab the pig. And I use the saw cleaver for this because the saw cleaver is the best for getting these backstabs. Usually, uh, I say the best because if the backstab charge is too slow, then the pig will more often than not have enough time to kick you, and then you can't do these chain backstabs like I'm doing here. The saw cleaver is fast enough to the point where you can, uh, you don't need to throw any more pungent blood cocktails, you can just do one backstab right after the other and not get kicked. Sometimes you'll get kicked, but most of the time you're safe. There you can see, it was only on the screen for like a second, or not even a second, but like a split second. The pig boss always drops radiant gems, which uh, decrease stamina consumption, and to be frank with you, I don't really think it's, I don't really think it's worth it, so I just get rid of those gems. So in layer two, I believe I get confused here, I get a bit disoriented. Uh, I'm taking the elevator up, and I don't want to do that. Let's see, what was I doing here? Oh yeah, I was getting the uh, weapon for the boss. So I actually slipped. I'm calling for the elevator, but then I realized that I don't want to use the elevator. I'm in the wrong spot. I want to go into that tunnel there. What's really nice about these three dungeons that we're I'm, a, I'm about to show you, well, the um, the levers are located really close to the to the lamps, and there's hardly any enemies between you and the lamp. So these are, in my humble opinion, the, the best best dungeons for nourishing gem farming. So the reason I switched to the church pick on the elevator is because this next boss is the Brain Sucker. And the Brain Sucker is one of the easier Chalice Dungeon bosses, but it's also one of the more annoying ones because they can steal your insight. But um, the Brain Sucker, although doesn't have a big HP bar, um, does have a weakness to thrust damage. And the Church Pick is all thrust. Well, it's like 90% thrust. So you can see here, it just, it's actually just destroying the Brain Sucker. I didn't really have to be fancy with the transform attacks, but I guess I was feeling saucy, so why not? Now in the third layer, I believe you do want to take the elevator, that's why I got confused on the second one. You take the elevator up, and then you'll go through a little tunnel. And then once you exit the tunnel, you want to throw a cocktail, because there's going to be a werewolf below the stairs. So I throw it, and I just fall down. The cocktail will distract that thing. 
while you run through past the aliens and into the room with the lever. And there is some uh, insight, or madman's, what is it? Great One's Wisdom, yeah. You can pick that up if you don't uh, mind being poisoned, or almost poisoned. Yeah, be careful for those little slug things, because they can cause frenzy if they bite you. Usually not too dangerous, but they have killed me, I think. So, in the third layer is when we finally get to Amygdala. So this is about a 10 minute farm. And some really good weapons you can use, Ludwig's Holy Blade, really good option. But I chose to use the Kirk Hammer here. Uh, I find the Kirk Hammer is just a really, really fun weapon to use, especially against Amygdala. Oh, and by the way, I guess I should mention, this is a max blood level character, so everything's pretty much, you know, pimped out here. I have found that the arcane buff with the phantasm shell does the most damage. I could be wrong, but I, from what I remember, that buff does more damage than the bolt paper did. So you can see I'm just barely staying out of range here, and I'm using the executioner's gloves. Very good tool against Tomic Dala. You know, I always want to hit the head, so just look at how much damage this weapon does. And then you do this fully charged R2, and look at the damage. 6,800 damage and a visceral to boot. For 9,000 damage, it's insane. This weapon. And there you have it. Cursed Nourishing Abyssal Blood Gem of the Triangle Variety. So the nourishing gems that the Amygdala gives you are give you a higher attack up. So you can see here these are all attack up 21.5%. That extra 2% uh, you get from Amygdala. And you can see here that the second second stats, you know, these are all, I believe, well, not all of them, but most of these come from this Amygdala. You can see the secondary stats are really good. Attack up at full HP, attack up near death, and then the add arcane plus 15 is the uh, the one that I prefer. Alright, and so this is the last dungeon. This is this gives you the the waning shape. So you get these three gems and then you put them on a lost weapon for your elemental elemental type. So these gems work the best on uh, burial blade, blade of mercy, holy moonlight sword, Legarius wheel, Amygdala arm, and then I prefer the Add Fire for the Boom Hammer and the Add Bolt for the Tenitrus. Which these dungeons give you the attack up at full health and near death and the Add 15 Arcane. But you can use them on those weapons, you know, there's nothing, you know, you're allowed to make the weapon that you want to make. It just I prefer to use the weapon in the way that I think the developers wanted you to. Like if the weapon does arcane damage along with physical damage, then I prefer the arcane buff to it as opposed to just adding fire because it just doesn't feel right to me when I use the, the wheel and it has fire on it. It just doesn't. I just, it's just not the way I like to play the game, I guess. I say, I say I like to play the game the way the developers intended and yet these dungeons are save edited. <laughs> The irony is not lost on me. Now the first boss is Keeper of the Old Lords. I hate this boss because he can one-shot you. He's just annoying. So I buff up with Bolt Paper with the Saw Cleaver. And then you just R1 spam because he's very easily to stagger. So you just stagger him to death. And then luckily, well not in this case, but if you're lucky, when you're done spamming, you can shoot because he'll want to do some counterattacks and then you can parry him and then get uh, get a visceral. I'm not having a whole lot of luck here, but I think I get this one, yeah. And then he drops a sharp gem. So the keeper always drops a sharp gem 
which increases your weapon skill scaling. Uh, the skill scaling increase that it gives you is it's just pitiful. It doesn't give you enough. Other gems always beat it, so the sharp gems are pretty much worthless. Same is true for warm gems. I think every other gem has at least some some utility to it, but the, the sharp gems are just not. So for this next uh, this next lever, it's easily it's easy to get lost, but you guys should go up and go across this bridge. Uh, if, you, if you go through the wrong door, it's easy to get lost, but if you go up and across that bridge, it's right here. I feel I was surprised I got that parry because it looked like he was, it barely looked like he was attacking, but he was. They're pretty easy to parry. Now this boss is the Beast Possessed Soul. Again, I my strategy for his. It's like the man-eater boar. I throw a pungent blood cocktail, it distracts him, and then I just try and chain backstab him. He's a bit harder to backstab than the pig, but with the saw cleaver, it's pretty good. I think you do about 6,000 damage for every backstab you get. Because, yeah, as soon as he gets up, he'll, wanna, he'll, he'll evade you won't be able to get that backstab, but sometimes he'll, yeah, he'll, he'll get in front of you and you can backstab. I didn't get the backstab there, so I just went and spam. Now you can see here that he dropped an arcane waning gem. Arcane gems don't really drop in the Loran Chalice. Arcane gems are almost exclusively uh, come in, a, in the triangle shape. But this dungeon is save edited, so the likelihood that you'll pick up an arcane waning is very high in this, in this specific dungeon. Check the uh, video description for the for the glyph. And then you here have the uh, third layer. So this dungeon only has three layers. As you can see, minimal enemies, uh, levers really close to the the lamp. It makes this a very quick farm. I think this dungeon I can run in about 7 minutes with good RNG. Now in Loran, you still fight the Amygdala. It appears in the Is and Loran Chalice. So the waning gem you get is the 21.5%. I do not believe that I got that Abyssal gem in this in this run, but you do get that uh, gem from this boss. So you just have to farm. And so for this time, I'm using the Ligarius Wheel. It is my favorite weapon in the game. Partly because it's a meme, but also because I just like the weapon. So you can just barely stand out of range, do a running attack, you get that triple hit on his head, do an R1, hit his arm, use the executioner's gloves. Here I'm just kind of whiffing a bunch of hits. Do an R2 on his head into a visceral attack. Then I believe I just spam the executioner's blood. He's pretty much low enough on health where I can just kill him to death with with, uh, with the gloves. And there you have the curse nourishing damp variety. So even though this isn't the abyssal, he does give you the abyssal type. And uh, as you can see, the one that he gave me here is actually pretty good. And then I show you some of the, the nourishing abyssals like this one, add arcane, attack plus 14, add physical, 50. He doesn't give you the physical ones in this particular dungeon, but there are other save edited dungeons out there that do that. Anyway, so 
I guess that's it for me. Uh, I just added this little bit on at the end just to show you the cursed nourishing abyssals they have on each of my weapons so you can just see here what kind of AR they're dealing. Uh, comment below if you have any questions. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video.